So joining me today from California is Kofi Pepra. Now, Kofi is a board member of the African Communities Public Health Coalition, also known as the African Coalition. Kofi and the members of the African Coalition joined together almost 10 years ago in response to the growing challenges of mental illness in African communities here in the United States and to the lack of cultural competent outreach and educational mental health services. Kofi, welcome to Bradshaw Live. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Brad, for doing such a beautiful review of uh, what we do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, you are originally from Ghana, I understand. You're now living in California. Tell us about your immigration background. Okay, I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa. I moved to the United States in 2004 uh, when I met my sweetheart who was studying at Ghana University. I was, I was also working over there. Mm -hmm. And she said, hey, let's go to America. And I said, all right, cool. Why not, so, right? <laughs> why not? <laughs> so I moved here in 2004, and I've been living here since then. Wonderful. And you got your green card through, I guess you, you married this woman, correct? Yes, and, yes. And, but it, was, it wasn't very easy because why? I came with um, the K-1 visa where right. we give you like three months to get married. Right. After we get married, I got a conditional. And just to change to become permanent resident, there was some mess up application process and it took me forever to get my permanent residence. So I have to see my Congress person, Adam Smish in, 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 in California uh -huh. for them to process my case for me. So that, it wasn't easy. That's why guys like me exist. Other than that, I guess I would be selling apartments somewhere. Uh, and that's why this immigration show exists. You actually had to do three cases. You had to do a fiancé visa just to come to America. Then you had to do a yes. two-year conditional green card. And then you had to go get your permanent green card. And, and are you a citizen now? Yes. I so now that was the fourth case you had to do with immigration just to eventually become a citizen. It's not an easy process. As you were telling us your immigration story, we were looking at some of the beautiful pictures of Ghana and Africa. Tell us a little bit about your country. It looks just absolutely stunning. Yes, you know, I, you know, I teach at college, so I always find, I teach geography, so I always find students asking me about, how is Ghana, how did you get here? And I'm like, no, Ghana, we have remote places and we have cities as well. So it's not like the Discovery Channel villages right. that we see on TV and stuff like that. Right. But there are Discovery Channel villages where we in the cities even see it on TV, just like everywhere you find remote places. But Ghana is, I heard yesterday that it's going to be becoming the, the fastest growing economy in the world in terms of about 8% growth wow. rate because we found oil and, and then we are basically involved in uh, export of cocoa, chocolate, all the chocolate that you guys eat here, bulk of the, the raw beans come from Ghana. And, and so Ghana is a very rich country. Now you are not only a professor of of geography, you are also started this coalition that helps Africans to adjust to life here in America and also yes. helps them if they have some sort of mental illnesses or depression or anxiety uh, over whatever may be troubling them in life. How'd you go from expertise in geography to recognizing that, that there's this need uh, and, and starting a, basically a coalition that helps people with mental illness? So that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, geography is about spatial organization of things on the Earth's surface. So we look at where and why things are where they are. And so I was in graduate school in UC San Francisco studying global health. And when I came back to Los Angeles, uh, my wife was, uh, she's a psychologist. She was working with some group from Ethiopia. And she's like, look, these African groups are really helping out. So go check it out. When I went, I saw that, wow, there's a need for, for helping people who are experiencing mental health challenges in California. So I joined it and then we incorporated it. So what we were doing is go to the community, talk to them about the services that are available and why they should not just keep the mental health issues to themselves. Because, you know, in Africa, if somebody has mental health issues, there's a lot of superstitions about it. You know, some might think, oh, you've been cursed or, what, 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 people, or if you go see a psychiatrist, they think that they must be crazy. They must be crazy. They right. use the term crazy. 
Right. And so nobody wants them to be crazy. Right. But our is to tell them that there's the mind can also get sick. Just like your body can get sick, your leg can get sick, your tummy can get sick. And so you seek support. And so what happened is that we got um, Department of Mental Health in L.A. to help su support us. So we're doing outreach. And so through the outreach, we found out that the main key that is giving a lot of people mental health issues were immigration. Because a lot of Africans came, some of them came as refugees, some of them came as students. Right. whose visa expired, some got married, and then their marriage got, you know, uh, dissolved, and they don't know what to do. And so there was a lot of challenges over there. So we incorporated the immigration services. What is the most important information that you think that people who immigrate from Africa need to know? What we want them to know is that there are services available for any mental health challenges people have, and that if you are, have mental health issues, it doesn't mean that you are condemned and stuff like that, or you can function in society, because there's a lot of services there. And African Coalition, we have well-trained Africans from all over. So we have uh, mental health psychologists from every African community who provide culturally appropriate services to you, talk to you in your own language, let them know, let let, them, let you know that, hey, you are not alone and that we understand your case and stuff like that. So, so when you go out and do this outreach, how do people know to find you? We do outreach programs and we train community advocates. We have, we have a group from Sierra Leone, we're training people from Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, and they are, they are like the, our source of they have that link into the community and so they will refer us to people there they will tell them hey this guy is having a, this challenge sometimes we call in or sometimes they refer them to our office and stuff like that and then when we go for uh, outreach programs like you can see in the picture here we were holding an african leadership conference where the leaders from various communities we brought them to our office where we talk about what we provide and they are the link to the community and they will be the one referring people to us and stuff like that. So usually we, we target the leaders. Right. So then we go to churches, we go to the mosque, so that we go to the little restaurant, then we leave our flies, then we talk to the, the, the restaurant manager or the director or whoever is there like, hey, this is what we are doing. If any of your people come with issues, just refer them to us. And we have links to all the major service providers in, in the community where uh, we make referrals. So this yeah. doesn't. This could be immigrants from, I guess, presumably anywhere in the world. Although you are concentrating on people who come from Africa, you're going into those communities. But it literally could be you. You could help anybody. It could be anybody. We are more like, hey, why don't we help our people? You know. And then while we are helping, we find other people also coming in from Haiti, mostly from Black Africa, from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. everybody coming over to say, hey, we need help. Two days ago, we got somebody calling that there's a guy from Haiti who, who's being released from, from prison and that they, they, they feel like he has some mental health issues. So what are we going to do? They refer that person to us and we're able to connect the person to other service providers in the community. Who help him. On your Instagram account for the African Coalition, you have a lot of gripping messages there about mental health. Uh, would you like to talk about a few of them? I'm going to read a few here that we that we grabbed off your Instagram account. One says, not all wounds are visible. Another one says, black people are 20% more likely to experience serious mental health problems. Another one says, self-love. And another one says, how do you help someone with depression? You want to talk about this? Where did these messages come from? So yeah, these are very important things. This is not like something we just got out of nowhere. It is like a lot of Africans, especially immigrants from Africa, are walking around and if you go close to them and talk to them, a lot have a lot of mental health issues in terms of where do we go? I'm having an issue at my job. I'm being discriminated against. I feel like because I'm from Africa, I have an accent, so they underestimate me. And, and, and I'm just tired of that. What, what do I do? You know, and stuff like that. And we provide them with counseling that, look, it's not you only. Everybody go through those problems, but we can help you out. You have to talk out your issues. And we find somebody who speak the language, who understand them, to be able to establish rapport with them and talk and stuff like that. And, 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 and just like I said, because African 
in America, they group us all together as blacks. Right. 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 But the point is that, yes, we are all blacks, but Africans from the continent have a unique problem compared to the African American born here because if most Africans from back home may have immigration issues, African Americans don't have that issue, right? If they have some kind of uh, discrimination against even just speaking, like, hey, where are you from? No matter what, I say I've been here since 2004, I'm a full blown American. Every time they still ask me, where are you from? Right. Even if I tell them, what do you mean by where are you from? They say, oh, where are you actually born? I'm like, okay, but what, what, what are you actually born? They'll be like, oh, I'm born in California. I'm like, where did your great grandfather came from? Okay, I'm Irish. It's like, at what point in time will you become American? Right? And a lot of people are contributing to this society, but yet they still feel like they are not being integrated into the society, causing a lot of mental health. So our point is, how do you help such a person if you don't understand their culture, if you don't understand where they're coming from, if you don't understand? Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm don't... just listening to what you're doing. It's like actually unbelievable. The more you think about it, you know, from my perspective, you know, I help people get green cards. I help them get here. I make them legal. But then I don't see what happens after. You know, how do they yeah. assimilate? How do they how do they make it their you know, on their day to day basis? And that's where you come in and your organization comes in. And I, I'll yes. say this. Another thing, just because you need to see someone for mental health issues. To me, it's like going to the gym to work out your body. Almost every person, almost every person. And I've never met a person who cannot probably benefit no matter whether they were born in America, they were born in another country, no matter what their immigration status is. I've never met a human being who probably couldn't benefit from having at least some sort of mental health counseling. It's just, it's, it's, it's like working out in the gym, your muscles, you gotta work out your mind as well. It always feels yes. good to talk to someone, make sure you're on the right track. It doesn't make you crazy. Just sometimes you just need somebody to talk to and, and certainly, you know, help you make your way through life. And, and, and certainly what you're doing is, is beyond admirable and, 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 and amazing. Are, are you just in California? Or are there other groups that you are associated with outside of California? Most of our clients are in California, Los Angeles, and then we have some from San Diego. And we have an attorney, like pro bono attorney in New York where, you know, so that he calls in and, and talk to us and give us information mm -hmm. about DACA, especially DACA, about TPS, right. about all the immigration challenges going on. So we do that and we inform the African population about the nature of the law now, what is happening, what is the challenge right here. And this is the board members, as you can find in, in the picture. So we, we are more like advocate as well as providing direct services to the African well, well, it's fantastic what you do. How can people find out more about your organization? You can go online and look for www.africancoalition.org and all the information you're looking for. Well, Kofi Pepper, that's amazing. All of these services you do for free, you get funded by, uh, yeah. by, by the county of Los Angeles, I assume. And, and yes. what you're doing to help people, you're really making a difference and a fantastic job. And of course, thank you for your time and coming on our show. Thank you for, for the interview. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.